Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. As today, against my better judgment, we are indeed going to see where Rugan has... Rugan. In part because it's fairly obvious, we have a very clear series of tracks and blood trails and signs of an ongoing fighting withdrawal. And, uh, you know, while I was all hopped up on getting back to the Druid's Grove, because I do feel like we're getting outside of our challenge rating here, we haven't even touched the Ruined Village, um, I have had people point out that simply by being here, we may have set Rugon's fate into motion. So, best we weigh in now, lest we not be given the chance to do so later. Worst case scenario, we'll withdraw as needed. We've managed thus far, despite uh, despite the occasional unpleasant surprise. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh. Flind, level 5, Null Warlord, 110 hit points. Okay, well that's, uh, that's a slight escalation. You know, I was about to say that despite the um, unpleasant surprise of like the triple attacks and such, We'd, we'd held our own against these guys thus far, actually. Hmm. They gave us no shortage of variable approaches here, but this one, this one by far looks like the best. We could wrap around, take this guy out relatively quickly, and then secure the steps. Oh yeah, yeah, look at that. I mean, that cave almost certainly comes up beneath it. And then we also have steps over here I didn't even notice when we were down below. So yeah, it does look like they pretty clearly want us to circumvent these guys and either attack from inside the cave or the top of those steps. And in either case, we would have a very manageable choke point. That symbol in the blood, what does it mean? Well, we have actually seen that symbol before. Damn, it's good to be alive. Yeah, yeah, that's the symbol the goblins were painting on things too. So that must be the time. That must be the symbol of the absolute. What path lies before me? Oh, yeah, yeah, see that? So Rugon is still in there. He's keeping them at bay with alchemist fire. Which I have to imagine he would run out of at some point. Either via internal tracker in his inventory or just, um, seen... Oh! Okay. Well, this... Isn't great. Hey, Rugan. Um, okay, well, this... This is not ideal, but it's not unmanageable. If we can get... Oh, fuck. Hear that? Someone's fighting the gnolls. We should help. Don't be a fool, lad. Shut your mouth and keep your head down. Leave the heroics to them that don't value their own skin. All right, well, this this is clearly not great. Um, I'm not sure exactly what happened there. We were nowhere near his detection range, but maybe it was just a triggered response. Oric took a pretty nasty hit on approach. Oh, gosh darn it, that's what happened. The party was in stealth, but the pets didn't auto stealth with them. I forgot to manually set their stealth flags. All right, I'm not taking the blame on that one. That's Larian all the way. They really got to get that fixed. But it's fine. Like I said, um, it's manageable. We've uh, we've just got to push him back. As you wish. Oh, 
We'll, uh, we'll array range fighters on these steps here. We'll get Karlak up front. She'll start shoving them off. And if we can get Gale up there next round, we'll Thunder Wave. Honestly, barring complete disaster, this, this actually makes for a pretty exciting fight. Okay. The rest are trying to come around. Which actually isn't terrible for us, because that'll take a couple of rounds. I'm heating up. And it will bring them through that puddle of acid. Alright, let's work on some crowd control here. Over there. Ah, too heavy. Yeah, that's fair. The thing's got to be like 500 pounds. We'll just hold the line until we can get Gale up here. Survival is all that matters. Keep it simple. I think you can take me on. And there we go. One out. We've still got the big guy left, but I'm really hoping we can just kind of, um, like, perpetually crowd control him while we wipe out all the ads. I will say, uh, this this is the sort of scenario where I'm kind of torn, because this would be a good situation to have something like Tasha's Hideous Laughter on tap. But it's also a Saver Suck spell, so, you know, given the savings throw values we're seeing here, odds are it wouldn't have worked anyway, in which case we'd actually be worse off, because then we'd be out in action and a spell slot. I'm actually really looking forward to those hyenas getting up here. I'm pretty sure those are light enough for Karlak to throw. Oh no, Gale, you can't... Because you used your action to cast Grease, right. With a shock of psychic pain, the pack leader's mind clamps onto yours. You see yourself through her eyes, a pulsing red cluster of organs. Feast! No, the voice has forbidden this meat. Nor see your whole world as a meal. This voice is acting as a leash, but it won't hold them for long. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. I just wouldn't have expected something like this to pop up in, in mid-battle. And I really wish it was Auric handling this, not Karlak. Then again, we have basically decided that Auric wants nothing to do with his powers, but that might not hold the same for Karlak, especially in the heat of battle. Though... Turning this thing on Rugon isn't exactly a morally gray area, and that's just straight up evil. A memory. The beast daubs the symbol of the absolute on a cave wall in blood. Buried deep, a tadpole struggles to assert control against the ravenous chaos of her mind. Oh, we have new options. You see drow and goblins restraining her, a mind player reaching out. And then the voice, bringing order. Eating this meat was forbidden. 
but it would lead her to a feast. Okay, well, first of all, that does seem to confirm that Mind Flayers are at least involved in the Cult of the Absolute, if not outright leading it. And then, aside from that, we've also got a much more palatable option here. Turning this thing's raw, primal hunger against its allies. Which I think we will do. Oh, wow. Yeah, this thing really is just, like, raw, primal hunger. It, it just takes the slightest of nudges to redirect it. It's essentially an auto-success. Sensing your presence, the Gnoll's tadpole writhes in ecstasy, echoing your command. Its host will feast on Gnoll flesh to control the hunger, to keep her teeth from your throat. A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. That's probably not great. Oh my goodness. Was that thing worth 240 XP? You know what? I'll I'll take it. I'm actually worried we'll hit level 4 too soon now. We, we need to get back to Damon before that happens. Let's keep pushing. Now you know I've got to push you off that cliff. That's that's just a given. You've really only got yourself to blame. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad we dominated that flend only for it to immediately fall over. Thanks, RNG. All right, let's get rid of this guy. We'll choppy chop. Or not. I guess we'll push you. <laughs> Goodbye. And pin this guy. I wonder if this is worth the cost. Another step forward. <laughs> Man, this would be a great time for Concussive Blast. Definitely grabbing that at level 5. <laughs> I guess we're not pushing you off the cliff now. I mean, I guess we could, but it just, it wouldn't be the same. is on acid. Now it's way too high. That hunter is going to be a problem. Doggo 2, doubling back. Going for Imperious Rex, right? And the Flind is finally back in. Uh, 
Uh, Karlak, I hate to ask, but could you put this acid-tripping doggo down? <laughs> I am conflicted. I am both very happy to have done that and also very sad. Can we, uh, can we bump this guy off? No fall damage. That's a bit odd. No choice but to keep going. I figured that would be about ten feet. But not a huge deal. We've we pretty much got this at this point. Though we might still have to fight the Flind. Notice we're not gaining XP for taking these things out. I think, um... I think we got XP for the entire encounter when we... when we mind freaked the Flend. On the double. Black. Hmm. You know, at this point, that grease is really just working against us. It is a slippery slope. Let the expendables deal with that last archer. We're not getting XP for it anyway. Well, so much for peace. Okay, well, scratch that. Let's take this dude out. The last board is set. She is still ravenous, her mind a hungry pit. The flesh of her pack wasn't enough to satisfy her. Oh man. That is grotesque. But honestly, what what are our realistic options here? We could sever the mental connection, fight this thing legitimately, but that would just put us at risk, as well as the surviving caravanners. And if we are unable to put it down, or if we just tell it to leave, that unleashes this thing back on the surrounding wilderness, including the grove, which is like a hundred yards out. That said, Shadowheart is a follower of Shar. I feel like encouraging this sort of self-destructive behavior would fall right in the uh, the Lady of Losses wheelhouse. Tadpole responds, thrashing violently, and the fragile tissue of her brain tears and splits. You taste the blood in her throat, feel it pooling in the cavity of her skull, but she still resists. Nah, man, we're, we're all in. Slightly tougher this time. Survival instincts kicking in. Ooh. 
Ooh, close. Your turtle wriggles, contented, as she tears out her own throat. Moving ahead. No time yeah. to rest. By the gods. You're a sweet sight. Are any of my crew still alive out there? No, no, they are very, very dead. It's, it's pretty grim. This whole journey's been one grim sight after another. Knolls, goblins, drow. Risen Road's more dangerous than ever. You're the first friendly face we've seen since Eltergard. Eltergard's a far way off, friend. Hopefully you're headed somewhere a might bit closer. We're bound for Baldur's Gate. Got some cargo to deliver. But we've a stop to make along the way. Somewhere safe between here and Baldur's Gate? Where might that be? Joaquin's Rest. It's just up the road. I'd be enjoying a mug of ale right now if those beasts hadn't jumped us. Listen, you look like you know how to handle yourself. You should meet my associates. We've got our own drinking spot by the tavern. Invitation only. Tell the fellow on the door. Little Serpent, Long Shadow. He'll take good care of you. Interesting. These guys are almost certainly smugglers. I have to ask, what are you transporting that's worth all this? Aye, the whole reason we're in this mess. Trinkets for some rich tosser in Baldur's Gate. He gets his shiny baubles. We get a handful of Tarenths. Tarenths are the currency of the Zentarim, a network of merchants and mercenaries with few scruples. Oh, and our mind reading option's gone. Which means it probably would have just revealed the same thing. That this guy's a smuggler working for the Zent. Terence. So you're Zent, then. I wasn't aware that the Zent dealt in baubles. You know who we are. Very clever. And you probably also know it's not smart to interfere with Zent business. This is the point when a clever lad like you accepts my gratitude and walks away. Dude, I just saved your life, but... But sure, yeah, I get it. I mean, honestly, um, he hasn't really given us much reason to intervene. We know nothing about the shipment, aside from that it's something magic and something the Zent have interest in. But at this stage, I believe the Zent are basically just a glorified smuggling ring. I don't think they're as nefarious as they were back in the days of Curse of the Azure Bonds. That aside... He has already essentially told us where he's headed and given us, I think, an invite to meet his employer. So no need to be premature. I think we'll just we'll let him do his thing. We'll meet his boss. And then we'll uh, we'll decide whether or not to shut them down once we get more context. No shortage of reactivity in this game. I am curious to see where this takes us. Rugon thanked us and invited us to meet his associates. To enter their hideout, we need to use the password Little Serpent Long Shadow. Hmm. Never a dull moment. All right. We've uh, still got some time left. We're not in great shape, but I think we can at least canvas this area before we head back to the grove. Just need to mind those active hazards. I figure we'll do about 15 minutes worth of looting and rummaging. And then we'll round things out by chatting up Damon. Progress Carlax quest and leave us off on the perfect spot for some between episode bartering. The rest of our crew's off digested and you're still alive. That's lucky.
Let's burn off our last couple of cures real quick, just in case. Take two. Plenty of potion fodder. Time to press ahead. tadpole we could consume. That is tempting, but I said we wouldn't. Plus the shattered flail. Uh, plus two flail. With Hinogu's gift. Hitting an enemy with this weapon heals the wielder for one to six hit points. But they can go mad if they don't continue hitting an enemy each turn. A bundle of bones and blood, and a soul-piercing demonic presence, is all that remains of the Flynn's flail. It would make a decent mace with a particularly nasty bite. Wait, okay, so it's not a flail, it's a mace. Weird. The healing's great, the plus two's great, but that madness... That madness gives me pause. There is work to do. We'll have Shadowheart hold on to that for now. Have a lot on my mind and well, in it. What path lies before me? Well then, it's our lucky day after all. Speedy reply. Plus one scimitar? Oh, sorry, it's not plus one. It just has the nimble effect. When the wielder hits an enemy with this weapon, they gain momentum for two turns. A heavy haft and wide blade belie the speed of this weapon. It parts the air as swiftly as any dueling saber. Okay, so basically a 50% movement buff. That's not terrible, but, I mean, with no pluses, I feel like it's not really worth building our characters around either. Let's clear these fires, check the cave. Choice. Hmm. Need to be careful what we touch here. These boots have seen everything. Something over there. What, really? No way. And so's the chest, more importantly. Thanks again. We'll head out as soon as we've caught our breath. I'll be glad when we're out of this bloody cave. Yeah, I hear that. Actually, you know what? We've, we've actually got a book on Zent we just picked up last episode, I think. Yeah, this one. The Leadership of the Zenterum.
a battered manuscript inconsistent in color and construction. The content appears to be following up on previous material. An excerpt from the ongoing Metatext Rebound by Iosefa Elgin. Despite their protestation to the contrary, it takes no keen eye to see echoes of Bainite philosophy in modern Zentrum practice, a strict militaristic hierarchy where all power flows from the top. Who occupies that position today is the matter of some speculation, for the Black Network's leadership was thought destroyed along with their headquarters at Zentel Keep in 1383 DR. In the following decades, however, a new base of power began to consolidate at the fortress of Darkhold, far to the south. At its center stands the Paragost, an enigmatic armored figure to whom the Zentrum's rebirth is almost single-handedly attributed. Whoever their leader, it is clear that this new Zentrum have not abandoned plans for domination so much as recalculated their approach. Where once their focus was on the subversion and conquest of nations, the network of today is much more concerned with establishing their stranglehold on the market a power which crosses borders that are closed to more conventional forces. Right, right, so still likely up to no good in the grand scheme of things, but less overtly sinister about it, perhaps? Like I said, more of a glorified smuggler's ring or, or black market organization at this point. What to do? with more of a capitalistic bent on world domination than a militaristic one now. Which, you know, comes with its own pros and cons, I suppose. I'm fine. And so's the chest, more importantly. Ah. If we'd had enhanced leap or flight, we could have entered over there. I don't think that entrance was guarded. More for me? The rest of our crew's half digested, and you're still alive. Looks empty. That's lucky. I actually really appreciate how many potential approaches they gave us to this particular encounter. Obviously, we ended up fighting our way through, which worked out just fine, but... We could have also snuck in through the side there. Or, I assume, come up through that cave below. Or we could have just walked right up to them. In which case, we would have actually encountered the, um... We would have encountered the Flind immediately if we had approached from the front. Because it was the one hanging back. It was the one painting the... The symbol of the Absolute on the rock. The only reason I didn't is because it was listed as hostile. An open heresy. All right, let's give this thing a gander. This pamphlet is written in simple, bold script for ease of reading. It has no signature, save a black circle at the bottom. Few recognize Shar as a goddess of creation, or Selun as a goddess of destruction. Yet both are true. Born in the primordial ebb and flow of time, they forged Abir Toril together, and Chantia, mother of life, sprung into existence. Light and dark hung in perfect balance, embraced by Shar, enlightened by Selun. Yet their creations were cold and distant, and Chantia prayed for warmth. This simple request divided the sisters, driving them to conflict. But it was Selun that forced true flame into Abir Toril, sparking the sun. How could Shar not be harmed by such a betrayal, forced to war against both the light of the sun and the light of the moon? As the goddesses tore each other asunder, they formed new gods and new conflicts, all for the sake of a little warmth. The lesson is thus. To put selfish comforts over the fate of existence is folly. For those who understand, the Lady of Loss is always listening. Interesting. I actually really appreciate that. That does give some very intriguing perspective on why people might decide to worship or dedicate their lives to someone like Char. 
I mean, obviously, I still don't necessarily agree with it. Char seems like bad news all around, but... But I do like efforts to make these overtly evil deities more complex, more nuanced. To actually give at least pseudo-realistic reasons, mythological or otherwise, as to why people would, in fact, dedicate their lives to them. You know, aside from just being maladjusted sociopaths. Anything of use? It's our lucky day after all. I don't feel lucky. The rest of our crew's half digested, and you're still alive. Let's slighten our load a bit. We'll do one more batch of Ender Trash, then we'll leave the rest for off screen. Oh, okay. Hold on. Gale? Okay. Back up. Let's move. Never wanted the easy path. We may have a trap here, so there's no point in having the whole party get caught up in it. We'll have Karlak take point on this. She has danger sense and she's fire resistant. Notice how they box us in with containers here. That implies... That implies an area effect. Well, lad, it's our lucky day after all. I don't feel lucky. Aww. The rest of our crew's half digested, and you're still alive. That's lucky. <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. Not what I was expecting, but that's fine. No lingering effects? I'm fine. And Making so me sweat. More importantly. Looks like just one time damage. What am I to do? Oh, and the uh, the cloud's gone. I was gonna light it up. That was unpleasant, but honestly, pretty tame as far as Baldur's Gate three traps go. They uh, they tend to get pretty elaborate and over the top. Let's collect our prize. See what was worth trapping. Reasons Grasp. Ever vigilant. When the wearer chooses to end their rage, they gain 15 temporary hit points. The snug fit of these gloves resists a bald fist, as if favoring the open hand of peace. Oh, that's cute. Not really sure we'll get any use out of those, but we'll, um... We'll toss those to Carlac, why not? And so's the chest. Not sure I really see many situations where I would voluntarily end her frenzying, but... But, I mean, that would give us some incentive to at least consider it. Mm. Onward, then. The rest of our crew's half digested, and you're still alive. That's lucky. Still alive, so that's progress. Another step forward. All right, I feel like that's probably our big prize for this area. Aside from the, the caravan chest. We'll save the rest of this stuff for off screen. Looks like it's mostly just garbage containers, barrels, crates, and such. Well, lad, Nothing I think we really need to burn screen time on. I don't feel lucky. The rest of our crew's off digested, and you're still alive. That's lucky. Let's pop back outside. I would like to do another quick sweep of the exterior paths. Always room for more?
Okay, so not really a lot to see here. Potion ingredients plus an alternate path we could have used to potentially meet with Rugon before engaging with the gnolls. Though we do have like a burned out manor house over here. Plus a broken bridge, which I think takes us into the ruined village. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think we're pretty much done here for now. We cleared out the toll house, took care of Carlac's thing, got caught up in a side trek with a whole wrecked caravan, but that's pretty much resolved, short of meeting Rugon's boss, which I have to imagine is Act Two stuff. We'll pop back to the Grove, have a quick chat with Damon. I'll loot the rest of that cave off screen and then uh, do some aggressive trading with Damon and possibly one or two other vendors between episodes. Bump up their reputation meters. I think, I think it's been confirmed. Almost every merchant does come back later in the game with updated wares. So it is in our best interest to essentially gift them two or three hundred spare gold to max out our relationships with them now while we're still level three. Which I guess means I should maybe do this guy too. I'm not sure the druids would travel though. If I had to guess, I'd say Damon and the Thiefling kids. They did specifically mention they're headed to Baldur's Gate after this. I'd die if I met heroic and reeking of this place. I'll figure it out. I'll never get the smell out of my clothes. I'll have to be burned. Damon? Sure. Blood excites me. I want to have a word. Right. Thought I sensed an infernal around here. But you aren't from Elturel. What's your story? I spent a good bit of time in the hells. Enlisted against my will by the Archdevil Zariel. Same as you, I suppose, if you're from Elturel. The devils were delighted when your city was swallowed up. I thought they had you for keeps. Glad you got out. I got lucky. It looks like you did too. And... You brought some infernal machinery with you. A little gift from Zariel. Keeps me burning hot. Very hot by the smell of it. Might be burning out a piston ring or leaking oil. Mind if I take a listen? Be my guest. But don't get too close or your eyes will melt shut. Phew! You really are burning up. Whoever put that engine together tried to house metallurgized demono valves inside a Ragnax alloy casement. Very risky. I might be able to help them, but I'd need infernal iron. And a prayer that my hammer will survive the work. That thing isn't meant to operate outside of Ernest. I'm not sure how much longer it'll keep running the way it's going. Will you be able to turn down the temperature a little? Worried I'm gonna go in for a handshake and singe someone's arm off one of these days. I'd worry about surviving the night first. But help one, help both. If we can cool you off, it'll stabilize your engine and allow you to touch whomever you please. Hi, Auric. Uh, I'm also here. So, where might we find some infernal irony? I've sensed some during our travels. It has a, a pull to it. Absolutely magnetic, once you know what you're looking for. I can show you where I'd look. Uh, perfect. Fantastic. That's just what we need. Mark it on our map and we'll keep an eye out. Meanwhile, I've still got plenty of weapons and armor in stock if you're looking to load up. I was actually hoping you could buy, like, 60 assorted pounds of human body parts and other assorted clutter, but we'll, uh, we'll talk about that a little later. It, this is Carlax time. Hmm. 
I see some consumables there I wouldn't mind grabbing. Forge from the heart. Hells take me. What I wouldn't do for better. Okie okay, dokie. So where are we headed? Where is this magnetic pole pulling us? That's the Carlac evidence. Oh, right there. Wow. Okay, that's just outside. That's the uh, that's the ruined village. And then we've got the goblin camp just beyond that. Get the Yankee patrol north of it. Oh. Wait. So that's that's the roadside tavern? Interesting. That's not too far out either. I really felt like that was going to be stuff for Act 2. Huh. Uh, anyway, uh, we're just past time, but primary mission today was to track down Rugon. Secondary was to chat with Damon. And I would say mission accomplished. We'll hit the pause button for now. I will pop back over to those caves, grab everything else that's not nailed down, do some off-screen trading with Damon and possibly some other merchants in town. And we will pick up here next time. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Revenant, Eloise, Croaking LOR, Dragon Matrix 7, Dracket, Theory B23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goat Leave, James Tremay, Kazor, Mark Diemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Rowan Church, Thomas Piedkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valen Rook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. This is the point when a clever lad like you accepts my gratitude and walks away.